The GLC class came out sometime in 2016 and from then until now, if you wanted to get yourself a GLC Coupe, your only option was the GLC 43 Coupe AMG. Lovely car in itself, pushing out over 350 horses from that growling V6. But what if you didn't want all that power? What if you wanted practicality more than that racy performance? What if you just wanted to arrive in style in a Coupe SUV but with a Mercedes-Benz three-pointed star on the hood instead of a Bavarian roundel? Now, I'm sure a lot of people like that exist, but I'm also sure that none of them were really praying for all of this to happen. Nevertheless, all of this has happened. What we have with us here is the Mercedes-Benz GLC Coupe, non-AMG. Since this is a more practical alternative to the GLC 43 Coupe, we are concentrating on the most practical variant in the lineup, the 300D for diesel. So under the hood is the familiar 1950cc four-cylinder turbo diesel that you also get in the GLC crossover. But to go with the coupe styling, the sportier styling and all of that, this one puts out 245 PS of power. That's 51 more than the crossover. There's also 100 Newton meters of extra twist for a more convincing torque output of 500 Newton meters. Certainly not AMG territory, but 0 to 106.6 seconds is fairly quick in my book. Add to that a finely tuned turbocharger, a more eager tune for the gearbox and you will never really feel the dearth of power and torque whether you're zipping around in town or road tripping on the highway. And speaking of road tripping, let's open up the other end of the car, the boot. There is now 500 litres of boot space, expandable to 1040 litres. Now that's only marginally lesser than the regular GLC crossover, but more importantly, it's big enough to carry more than a weekend's worth of luggage. Another good thing is, unlike most new Mercedes-Benz cars, you can actually use all of this space because the spare wheel goes under the floor. You don't have to leave it at home, nor do you have to strap it in the boot itself. So all of that space is usable. Oh, there's a power tailgate too. The GLC Coupe receives all the design updates we saw on the facelift of the GLC crossover but the changes seem to suit the coupe a lot more. Look at it from any angle and the GLC coupe looks sleeker than before. Partly because the bodywork isn't as aggressive as the AMG and partly because the smaller headlights and the finer detailing of the taillights impart a lighter appearance. The headlights also get multi-beam headlamps as a standard fit. A bit of a missed opportunity is this. Frameless doors would have gone perfectly with the coupe styling. And since the doors are open, let me also show you that ingress and egress is actually quite easy. And since it's not very difficult, I don't understand what purpose this sidestep is providing. It's more to add a ruggedness, a hint of ruggedness to the design. If anything, I think it just keeps brushing against your trouser and ends up spoiling it. More so during the rains. But these bits are easy to ignore and live with, especially when you see the onlookers appreciating the extravagant body style. It also travels on a similar 19-inch wheel size, but their 5-spoke design is chunkier. The shade of blue that you see here is exclusive to the coupe, but if I was buying, I would choose the Hayson Red or the Mojave Silver. While the exterior colour options are more or less similar to the crossover, the cabin trim options are much wider. Now this right here is an all black option, I quite like it. You get this open pore wood finish in the centre console or the tunnel console and you get these nice brushed metal inlays. Looks quite premium, feels quite nice to the touch as well. Overall the design looks quite nice and now you have this large infotainment screen, something that even the previous AMG Coupe owners have been wishing for. This one gets Apple CarPlay, it has the latest MBUX, it's also got the witty digital assistant whose name we'll not uh, take right now because she is too hungry for attention. The moment you say the name, she instantly wakes up. Okay, fine. Hey, Mercedes. How may I help you? Change ambient lighting color to blue. Okay, I am changing the color. Along with this, the other features that get carried over from the crossover are the rain sensing wipers, wireless charging, the USB-C ports, the touchpad for the infotainment and the swipe pads on the steering wheel for controlling the two screens. Yes, 
Two screens, like some of the high-end cars from Mercedes-Benz, you now get a digital instrumentation in the GLC Coupe. Now that's something that even the AMG owners have wished for. They've also wished for this infotainment and this screen setup looks quite nice. Now, uh, unlike some of the higher-end cars from Mercedes-Benz, you can change the layouts, yes, but the features or the way to change the layouts, it's not as intuitive as you have in some of the higher-end cars. Uh, you'll have to go deep within the settings to be able to change all these layouts. So let me quickly show you that right here. You can go to a classic setup, you can go to a sportier setup, takes a little bit of time, but it doesn't really change the layout by much. Most of the layout uh, remains the same. It's just the colors that it plays around with. And you can then, of course, customize it to suit your liking, to see what data you want to see. You can choose between a tachometer, the uh, navigation data. All of that is right here. I think it's very nicely laid out. It's very easy to read. It looks quite fine. It's not too big, not too small. It's very intuitive in that sense. So I really like it. But this being a driver-centric car, I would have also liked to see a heads-up display and ventilated seats, both of which are unfortunately missing. What the coupe does get is a memory function for the front seats. And though this is a driver-centric car, the rear seat isn't all that bad, contrary to what the low-set coupe roofline would suggest otherwise. Headroom is pretty good actually. They have nicely scooped out a little more space in the roof. I quite like it. For my height of 5'8", not a problem at all. But for maybe someone who is 6 feet and up, could be an issue. This space is ideally good for two adults and a kid. Also, the angle of the seat back, a little upright for my liking, a little bit of adjustability on the recline would have really helped. But what I really like is the height of the seats. Gives me nice ample shoulder room, gives me a good support as well. So that's a really nice thing. Long distance journeys, even with this upright seating position, shouldn't be a problem at all. The rear bench gets its own set of AC vents, two USB ports and more importantly, window blinds. There's a sunroof too, but only for the front. I wonder why. Interestingly though, the blind for the sunroof has these vents, uh, which also means that to use the exhaust function of the sunroof, you don't really have to open the blind and then use the exhaust or the tilt function of the roof. You can simply leave it closed and these vents will help dissipate that hot air, which is a very nice thing. And speaking about the controls on top here, what you also get is this SOS switch. I think that's a very big addition to the list of safety features that this car comes with. This is obviously at the mercy of the network, of the phone and of the embedded SIM. Uh, but then this is a very important feature. In case you have an accident, in case you are in some sort of an emergency, you can always press this switch and it will uh, essentially contact the call center. It will send out your coordinates to the emergency services and all of that. And I think that's a very nice feature to have. I just hope that network keeps working so that this is always active as and when you need it. As of now, yes, I need the car to save my soul as well. Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? I'm feeling hungry. Please select an entry. I think Lion's Dhaba sounds good. What would you like to do next? Let's go. The route is being calculated. Thank you. Anyway, so continuing with this. Now, the Hey Mercedes feature obviously works with uh, the phone. Uh, there are certain functions that will work without any network like we did with the ambient lighting and the air conditioning and all of that. But some of these functions like the one that I use right now will again need network connectivity. Since we're talking about the roof, the coupe roofline does reduce the size of the rear windshield compared to the GLC crossover. That's natural, but that also reduces the aperture that you get in the rear view mirror. Thankfully, despite the seats being that tall and despite all the three headrests being that tall, they don't really intrude into your field of vision in the rear view mirror, which is a very good thing. I think that's very nicely and wisely designed. And on topic of visibility, well, from the driver's seat, the visibility is excellent. Despite the coupe roof line again, where the A pillar is different, where the angle of the A pillar is different than the crossover, it still doesn't really intrude into the driver's peripheral or the cornering vision. Even the mirrors are not too big. The wing mirrors are nice and short. So in terms of visibility, there is no problem at all.
the engine that powers the 300D is certainly not the most powerful engine in this category or the class, but it has enough enthusiasm, enough go in it to put a smile on your face every time you step on the throttle. And when you do, you also realize that for a diesel, it sounds pretty good. But those twin exhaust pipes that you see on the bumper, well, they are fake. At the same time, the engine can also be calm and relaxed and obedient if you want it to. If you want that laid-back drive, it will complement that attitude as well. And there are different driving modes to suit that attitude or suit different attitudes. You have the dull eco mode or a balanced comfort mode. And then you have the enthusiastic and racy sport and sport plus modes. There's also the individual mode where you can set things differently if you want to. As you would expect, these modes alter the throttle and gearbox response, the level of electronic intervention and the steering feedback. The steering response is exceptional for a Mercedes-Benz. It doesn't feel overly heavy when you're in the Sport or the Sport Plus modes. If you move to the Comfort or the Eco modes, it doesn't feel over-assisted either. I like the kind of balance that it achieves in all these modes. I like the difference of uh, the response of the feedback that you get in all these modes. What I also like is that the steering comes with paddle shifters now, so you have a tighter control when you want over the gearbox. What you can't tighten or loosen, however, is the suspension setup. There are no adaptive dampers on this one. If you want that level of customizability, you will have to get yourself the AMG. That said, I like the kind of balance that the coupe achieves with its suspension setup. Yes, there is that roll over the outer wheel when you're tackling bends, it's still there, but it's not as pronounced as you have it with the crossover. At the same time, the ride quality, though a little firmer than the crossover, is not as bone jarring as what you have with the AMG. So the bottom line is, when it comes to handling manners, it feels more sporty than the crossover. But when it comes to ride quality, it just doesn't feel as firm as the AMG. So I like that balance. If I were to choose this as my daily driver, it would be the 300D or maybe even a 300 petrol, depending on the yearly mileage that I'm going to put in. But if this was only going to be a weekend driver, then maybe I would stretch and get myself the AMG. So that brings us to the question, who is the GLC Coupe for? I think it is for two kind of people. One, who think that the GLC crossover is a bit too mainstream. Or two, for people who already have a luxury car and now want to explore the option of having a Coupe SUV in their garage as a second or a third car maybe. Mercedes-Benz believes that there are many such people in the market, enough to justify local assembly for the GLC Coupe. And that in turn has made the pricing of this car rather competitive. Not like the previous one wasn't, the GLC 43 sits at an excellent price tag. It is about to be replaced with the facelifted model of course, but at its current price of about 80 lakh rupees, I think it is very competitive, very tempting for an AMG. Now this car with its ex-showroom price of about 64 lakh rupees for the 300D, bridges the gap to that AMG model quite well. And then it brings other advantages to the table, like the tech inside the cabin, the more powerful powertrain options it has over its crossover sibling, and the overall better kit that it brings along. So all of this, in fact, means that the sum of all of this is, or rather the sum of all of this easily surpasses the premium that this car charges over the crossover. And the kind of accessibility it gives you compared to the AMG, I think all of that puts this car in a rather sweet spot and makes this a very tempting, sweet deal.